through this uh, positional hierarchy, as it were, it's, it's important to kind of keep in uh, to consideration the mantra of position before submission. And basically what that refers to is that I need to establish a dominant enough position before I start thinking about attacking. I don't want to attack from inferior positions because, first of all, he can revisit it back on me worse than I can do anything to him. Um, if he understands how the position works. Also, I tend to not have the leverage or the ability just mechanically to do submissions from bad positions. There are plenty of exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, that's a pretty safe rule to begin with and to kind of keep in mind across the board. So now I'm moving up and navigating through these positions. I start to find opportunities now as we're improving positions. So we're gonna look at this open guard position again that we just talked about passing, and instead if, see if maybe from here, he starts to present me with the opportunity to look for an attack. And an attack that he's obviously presenting to me is the ability to maybe attack the feet or the legs. Um, one way that I can look to do this is if we're in this position, I'm gonna to start to push here like I'm looking to pass his legs. As I push this, I've already, already maybe observed the, the fact that he wants to extend this leg. So I'm gonna play on that, that kind of thing and commit it to that kind of course of thinking. As I push here and get that resistance of him pushing back against me, if I let go here and have him extend that leg, then I scoop up and now I can start to wrap this foot. To be able to really uh, significantly attack this though, I need to establish my position like we mentioned before, position before submission. You notice that my foot over here is kind of hooking his butt and now I've wrapped here and I want to get as perpendicular as possible with my forearm across the back of his Achilles tendon on this side. So as I wrap that up here, I'm going to step up this direction and I'm going to sit down and pull over here. Whenever I do that, this foot is going to his hip so that my toes are turned outward in relation to his body and my heel is turned in. Because I'm hooking over here, I'm trying to touch my knee to my heel on this side. And the way that I have this wrap, which is perpendicular, I'm gonna now make sure that my grip is nice and tight, and I'm gonna drop my shoulder to the floor and then extend my posture backward, resulting here in a really tight footlock. What's happening in a footlock, the mechanics of this that are used for breaking is I'm squeezing and compressing tight around his leg, and I'm gonna push this direction here back. So there is an extension here, but it's not just about breaking, but it's also about attacking and uh, suffocating the movement of the ankle. I've isolated the movement of his leg, and we talked about those points of articulation on the arm earlier. The points of articulation on the leg are kind of a, a same kind of corollary. He has the hip, the knee, and then the ankle. When I go to wrap this here, I want to make sure that I keep it nice and compressed. I have the legs in position here, stopping him from being able to get very close to me or pushing his foot to the floor. Just from here, I don't quite have the leverage, but once I drop my shoulder to the floor on this side here, then I can start to arch back. I like to hold here on the uh, shin here so he doesn't press the knee forward, and then look back and start arching my back this direction. It's very important to consider that whenever I'm going to do this, I try to keep perpendicular, and as I go to arch back, I don't let my hand stay behind and open the space and relieve that pressure, but instead keep it tight so that I can break the foot.